Hey guys, today what we're going to talk about is survival knife and sheath mods. Stick around. All right, guys, so I just wanted to clear a few things up. Thank you very much for subscribing. What I need you to do is very simple. Just hit that thumbs up, hit the little bell icon and subscribe to this channel. There's over 80% of you that watch me on a, on a weekly basis and you're not subscribed. So I don't know why, but please go ahead and subscribe. This way you'll get up-to-date information. As soon as I drop a video, you're gonna get it. Also, become a Patreon member. Only cost you $1 a month and you will watch videos like this before everybody else. So you don't have to wait a week long. As soon as I got this video, edit it, drop it on Patreon, you'll be able to watch it. it only cost you $1 a month. And again, any of the comments, much appreciated. I know this is a very large subject, so I wanted to make sure that I include you. Put the comments down below if you have anything that you want to add to this conversation. I'm more than willing to do it. All right, guys, I want you to understand that this is not so much about the knives themselves. I have plenty of knives on this table that I consider to be quote unquote survival knives, but this is going to be very personal to the person. And I want you to understand that if you are doing something specific to your task, such as I am a bushcrafter or such as I am a survivalist or such as I went hunting one day and now I got turned around in the woods. What the hell do I do now? Those are the kind of things that I think about before I head out into the forest, the jungle, the swamp, that kind of thing. I want to make sure that I am well prepared. So you're going to see a plethora of knives, not mine. And if you are interested in a knife, please go to threeriverblades.com. I will make you a survival knife. All right. These are store-bought. These are the ones that I purchased with my own money prior to being a knife maker. I just wanted to add these things to the list. If you are somebody that wants to maybe not buy a custom knife, I have plenty here available for you. I will put all the links down below for you guys just so you can go ahead and purchase. And again, I'm an affiliate of Amazon. So if I get a couple cents on a dollar, thank you very much for your support. So, so again, this is basically what I would put on a survival knife. And in this case, a machete. All right. Has a lot of different things going on here. A lot of different colors. And again, this is not the only way of doing it. This is a way. This is my way of doing it. And again, there's some things that are good on this and some things that are not so good on this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the camera down so you can see the plethora of awesome steel that I have here and a couple of the survival kits that I kind of put in place and why I put them in there. So let's let's drop this camera. All right, guys. So let's talk about a couple things that I have here on the table. I have machetes. I have blades. I have all kinds as different size knives but again i want to be very specific about what your task is if you're just going to go play around in the woods such as a bushcrafter or something like that and you're probably not going to need all this something like a survival kit would go in your pack or in your pocket anyway i don't really like the fact that there is a all-encompassing survival sheath knife combination because what happens is you wind up with monstrosities that look like this I don't know about you, but I specifically, I do not want to carry this around in the woods for any length of time. It's very heavy, it's clumsy, it's bulky. However, it will come in handy if you need it. So maybe something like this is something that you want to do and put it in your pack, maybe on your four wheeler, maybe in the bed of your truck. I don't know, something like this, you just throw it in there and if you need to get it and go, that's fine. So what I had done here is I asked, I added an, a tin. This is a survival tin with all the survival goodies in there. Um, signaling, cordage, fire starting, fire making, um, compass, button compass, that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna open it up because it's just too much to go around, but a basic survival tin. And what I did is I found these bands on Amazon. I'm sure somebody's gonna ask me about it. These are called graffiti band. That's it, it's just called Graffiti Band. I don't know if you can see that right there. It's called Graffiti Band. Um, they're a little bit stronger, and what I was doing was I was looking for uh, an alternative to the bike inner tube Ranger Band, and I came up with these. These seems to be pretty good. I am still testing them. They come in multitude of different colors. I find they work out really well um, uh, for my applications, which is attaching stuff to everything and they're really thick, heavy rubber. And of course you could always use them as fire starter. Now, again, on this sheet, this happens to be just an Ontario. As you can see, 
This is one of the machetes that I use to go bushwhacking with. Uh, a lot of my hunting area and zone and camping area is in the northeast of the United States. We have foliage, but it's not a jungle canopy. It's some swamp, but mostly mountainous, cold, and very hard woods. Okay, so that's what we're running into. We have hardwood, we have pine, we have thickets. Uh, in the summertime, uh, it gets really nasty with underbrush. But again, this is a little bit thicker. This is your typical run of the mill US, on, US Ontario machete, 18 inch. But what's really good about it is they do sell this sheath on Amazon. Rothko makes this, but Rothko makes this with, I don't know if I could sit, show you on this one. This is the old Alice system. Okay, so you can see the Alice system here. I'll take this one out as well the old Alice system, and it's a pretty decent sheath. Most machete sheets are crap. Uh, they're made of very thin nylon and they'll rip as soon as you put a knife in there. So what I had done is I bought this on Amazon. Again, I think it comes in two colors and it also has a sharpener at the end. I don't know if you can see that right there. And it's just basically a V-knot sharpener. So you can take your machete and then of course run it through here and then sharpen your machete. So. Pretty cool setup. The only thing that I would suggest if you could find them is they have a Alice to Molly conversion pouch. That I think this is called a special Molly. Um, it's just an adapter. That's all it says. It's USGI adapter and you could set up your Molly there. And then of course you can also use it as a belt loop or as a dangler. I don't know if you could find these in the Army Navy store or maybe um, online somewhere but these things are great because what you can then do is attach it here and as you can see it's a nice pretty decent dangler and you could also attach it to your pack again what I had done with this is I kind of went a little bit crazy and I attached two different types of paracord uh, one is just regular OD green another one is orange for signaling that kind of thing and I do have a torpedo uh, Wiseman uh, sharpening stone. Now, I like the sharpening stones better than the, the notch sharpening metal on metal kind of thing. I just think it's a little bit finer. Uh, it's up to you. They're on Amazon for like, I don't know, $14, something like that, maybe even a little less. Uh, Wiseman Trading Company makes them. And again, this is one of those things where you're going to have to decide what you want on your sheath. This is just a very simple basic design. I did use Ranger bands. It's the same exact thing. Only difference is the machete does have a guard on here. And again, I use this for bushwhacking. As far as survival goes, this I'm going to use to go clear trails. I already have a pack with me. I already have food and water. I have rain kit, extra pair of socks. I'm not taking just this. And I think that's very important to understand that this type of setup, although super cool and Instagram likable, um, probably not really realistic. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, good to have inside of a truck, SUV. Let's say you lost your pack, whatever, that's fine. But again, not really my genre. Now, Essie being awesome, uh, Essie makes a couple of different survival type tools. Uh, already combined and what I liked about Essie stuff is that they already gave you the option with pouches and you can get these all online I think they make them uh, even larger now uh, so I have two SE fives one this is the one I just picked up this is an orange and of course it's some it's a left hand configuration I thought that was if you can't find this in the middle of the night or in the middle of the woods then you need to get your eyes checked all right everything on this sheet is orange What's cool about these sheets is you can buy these backers separate or you can buy it with the knife. They do come with Molly and it is a very, very stout Kydex, which I like very, very much. Uh, additionally, I'll try not to cut myself there. Additionally, you can buy the pouch. The pouch you could also put in an SE survival tin. Now this one happens to be empty, but Essie also sells survival tins with all the gear that I just said. So five C's, you know, cutting cordage, combustion, that kind of thing. Great. They also make them for the SE6, and I think they also make them for the SE4. Again, 
Very, very nice, robust, stout style of knife. And all of this right here really does stand up to the test of time. If you're a military person, if you're a survivalist, I think one of these knives, um, I would consider it to be called a survival knife. And again, it's small enough that you could put it in your bug out bag. And then if you needed just this, you would have it. I will caution you though, to not overpack the tins. Sometimes people have a habit of overstocking these tins. This one just happens to be a regular Altoids in silver and there is stuff in here. I remember putting it in there, but you can see that uh, they do get pretty bashed up and they don't always um, survive. So you gotta be careful what you put in there. Now, three great options right there, four great options. Uh, I have nothing against SE knives or survival kit on a knife. But there is certain ways to carry this stuff, all right? So SE came up with its own system. I like that. Nowadays, most knife manufacturers that are, you know, like I said, mass produced will come with like one single pouch. So on the blades themselves or on the sheets themselves, they're gonna have a pouch. Mostly what these pouches are used for is some type of sharpening stone or sharpening stick. Uh, they could be used for that. Again, like I said, if you're just going out for the day and you already have a pack, you probably would just put a stone in there. Not a big deal. Condor does this. Tops, SE, almost every manufacturer I know that has these Condora sheets will have that. You can modify that um, to suit your needs. Uh, this one, I actually did put a sharpening stone in there. All right, I think this is a diamond stone. Yep. This is a dime DMT diamond stone. I forget who makes this diamond machining Marlboro technology. It's just a cheap honing stone, no big deal. But the idea behind having a stone in here is so you in the field as you're working, you stop for lunch, you can sharpen your stone, you can sharpen your knife. I don't like to sharpen my knives until I come back to the rear or back to my house or back to my cabin because it's just extra stuff that I don't need. Again, I put sharpening stones on my machetes because I'm swinging it all day. Chances are I'll hit a rock or a hard stump. I'm gonna have to sharpen that or at least take that divot out or that weld out because then it's harder for me to cut. Um, and we're gonna talk about stones in a second, okay? Tops, most of Tops knives, now that they've finally gotten to Kydex, uh, used to come in this configuration. This happens to be the Steel Eagle, one of my favorite and one of the first knives that I ever bought was a Steel Eagle. I'm still a big fan of this, uh, and I'm gonna do a review on all my Steel Eagles because I have quite a bit of them, but big fan of Topps knives. Uh, usually came with a whistle. Uh, there's a little dangle piece here and it comes with a Topps whistle. I have it somewhere. So what I had done is I just made a very, very small survival pouch. All right, very, very simple. The only thing I have in here is a one liter uh, bag for water, water purification, a whistle, a lighter, a button compass, some tape, um, and a lighter, obviously, and a little bit of tinder, if I didn't say that. Uh, this is phenomenal. This is all I need, to be honest with you. If I get turned around in the woods, and let's say I left my pack somewhere else, yes, I know I'm gonna be hungry. I don't have any shelter. You cannot put shelter in this tiny little, little pack right here. It's not gonna happen. You don't want everything to look like this big monstrosity, okay? There's a reason why I don't do this anymore, okay? So something small like this with a heavy duty Ziploc bag, you can throw it in here in this little tiny pouch. It's waterproof, so I don't have to worry about it if it falls in the water or anything like that. I have my cutting implement, I got my saw. I have almost everything I need. If I wanted to, I can add cordage, I can add wire, I can cord wrap this like I'm cord wrapping everything else. That would be sufficient as a survival knife or a survival kit on my knife. Um, it's not too heavy, not too bulky. Now, the military being the military, and I'm sure some of you guys remember these from the 80s, uh, this was my original 1980 survival knife uh, made in China. Uh, oh no, Taiwan, stainless, there you go. So it was made in Taiwan, the cap opens up, 
and you have some waterproof matches in there and it does, does come with a sharpening stone, all right? So a little bit of nostalgia there for that piece or setup as a survival knife, survival kit setup. Um, not realistic, the blade steel is really crappy, the hollow handle knives are really not that good. Um, but other manufacturers started doing some things that I really liked, okay? So this, I believe, is an LT Wright. It's just a bushcraft knife, kydex sheath, fire steel on this side, honing, uh, ceramic honing uh, steel, it's, sorry, ceramic rod for sharpening or just fixing your knife, and a nice leather backer so it's very comfortable. This to me is almost all you need on a survival knife, in my opinion. Uh, very lightweight, convenient, comfortable, very well done. The Kydex is very well done. And this would, I would carry this all the time. Uh, I think that most people, when they go to this type of configuration, wind up not carrying it because it's too big, it's too heavy, depending on the person. I'm not saying you won't, but depending on the person. Mora, another one. This is a Mora knife. Uh, this happens to be, I think, the Bushcrafter. It's the heavy duty one. Very comfortable knife. And again, what did they do? They added a little bit of sharpening stone here, a little bit of fire steel, and it's a dangler, all right? You would be crazy not to carry this in the woods. This thing is super light. I could give this to my kid, my wife, whatever, and they would carry this. It's super lightweight. They would not carry this big honk and machete. Uh, the military also got into it, all right? This is a Gerber knife. I did carry this one overseas, along with a bunch of other knives. Um, but what's cool about this, this is, I forget which one this was. Uh, I know someone's gonna tell me. Uh, but Gerber made a very comfortable knife as a quote unquote survival knife, has the breaker in the back, you can use it as a spear. But what they did with the sheath is they made it very simple, but they also added in here a sharpening notch. I don't know if you can see that. I do have um, Ranger bands on there. And what I did with the Ranger band is I also put in a fire steel. I don't know if you can see that right there, but I put in a fire steel. So what this does is it allows me to create fire and to sharpen my knife. Notice the theme here, create fire, sharpen my knife. Create fire, sharpen my knife. Create fire, sharpen my knife. So what do we think may be one of the most crucial things in a survival element? Well. I'm not gonna tell you your business because that's completely up to you. But for me, I want a sharp knife and I wanna be able to create fire. Why do you think that is? Well, for me, I, always tell, I was always told as a youngster and always as I tell my children as we're getting older, that if you ever get lost in the woods and you don't know where you're going, stop. Find shelter, create a fire, all right? It does you no good to walk around the woods and wander and nobody can find you. So what, what does fire do for you? Fire gives you warmth, it gives you light, it chases away the boogeyman, it creates smoke, and it allows other people to come find you. If you ask any rescue person uh, that does it for a living how they found most of their survivors, it was probably because of fire, all right? Smoke signals, that kind of thing. Always carry a lighter. You can easily put a lighter in each one of these. Check your lighter, that kind of thing. Sharpening. These little tiny sh uh, sharpening things, okay, they're not great, but they work. Lansky's, Smith's, um, you know, here's another one. I think, which one is this? I don't know who makes this one. Oh, Smith's. These little ceramic things. Um, the most dangerous knife is a dull knife. So, fire, sharpening, right? This is the hockey puck. I know a lot of people like these because they're really cool. They're round. They actually make really cool cases for these and they're cool, but they are heavy. All right, this is kind of heavy. Also have tinder. Carry some type of tinder. Sometimes tinder is wet. It doesn't really work in the woods. I know you're gonna go out there, you're gonna rub two sticks together, great. Why not just carry a lighter or a fire steel or something like that, okay? Uh, have ultimate means of creating fire. This is a magnifying glass, but you can also use a Fresno lens, all right? Use the sun, so you don't have to use that up. Other different options to create fire as well. Now, 
Some people are gonna say, well, you know, I don't really use it for that. Um, what I like to do is I like to piggyback my knives or my knife sheets, all right? This is a piggyback or what I call like a parasite knife, all right? I, I think that's the technical term. This is a parasite knife. What it is is you have a very large blade for cutting, shelter building, that kind of thing. This is a SE uh, Hungless. I like this blade. I'm gonna go get some more testing on it. The Kydex sheet is amazing on this. It's very, very well done. It does have molly capability and you can also wear it on your belt. It locks in really, really nice. Hear that? That's super nice. Doesn't have all the cordage, doesn't have the, you know, all the other goodies on there, but all I did was I put a um, sharpening stone on the back. This lighter, orange, so I know where it is, goes here. I, know, I, didn't, I had it here for a while. I had to take it out, right? So I have orange lighter, orange bands, and what I have here is my SE Azula, all right? SE Azula, really, really small, lightweight knife, okay? So again, sharpen your knives, create a fire. That's all I kind of need. I mean, again, that's up to me. Um, most people will say you're crazy, but uh, as far as survivability, I do have other options that I can go with. A lot of people like to carry cordage. I agree with you. You can make cordage in the woods and it's very difficult to do. Uh, I'm not a bushcrafter, so yes, I would have all those options as well. But for me, something like this, and I'm kind of good to go. Uh, maybe a, a ferrocium rod as opposed to a lighter because lighters do fail. It is a mechanical item. Also, if it's very cold out, lighters tend to freeze up where a ferrocium rod would not. So again, your 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 style, your kind of thing. You do what you you do you. Um, one thing I would caution. If you are gonna do something like this, and I don't have a problem with it, again, this is mine, I would not put the heavier items down at the bottom. I would keep them up at the top uh, because what happens is it, it swings on your leg like a pendulum and all the heavy items down here will wind up swinging into your knee, swinging into your leg, and it becomes very cumbersome. Also, like, also if I had like this, this heavy duty hockey puck down here, and it starts swinging back and forth. You can see how that can be pretty annoying. So if you are gonna do a machete survival sheath, put the heavy stuff on top, light stuff on the bottom. I did see a couple videos where people were using the SE pouches and putting them down here. I don't think that's a good idea. I think you wanna keep your weight towards the middle or higher up on your body. That's just me from personal preference and experience. I think that's a better way to do it. Uh, also other things that people do is inside their tins, you decide which how big you want your tin. Some people, this is a fishing kit. Some people, it's just a fire kit. Uh, inside here, these are two arrowheads. All right, I got this with a kit. I don't know if you could see that. SE makes really cool arrowheads. All right, I have another set of arrowheads somewhere else. But again, one less thing that you have to worry about if you wanted to go hunting. I don't know, in a survival situation, if you wanted to procure food and you could make a bow or had a bow but ran out of arrows, you might be able to make one with this, all right? so. To each his own. I really want to know what you do inside the comments, so please put that down below. Let's go back up top and finish up. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like videos like this, please like, subscribe, put the comments down below. Again, I'm not bashing anybody's ideas. I think it's outstanding that people even thought about this. And I was kind of late to the game. I'm kind of doing this. My experiences are different than yours. Whatever you do, please share with us, share with us. We're all about the, uh, the knowledge here and we wanna make sure everybody gets their say. Go to Patreon, become a Patreon member, get on the mailing list. All you have to do is go to threeriverblades.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom. First name, last name, and your email address, hit go. Uh, Try out Three River Kydex. I make all Kydex products up there. Three River Blades, I make all blades up there. Become a Patreon member and shop on Amazon. I'll drop the links below to some of this stuff if you're interested. As always, guys, thank you very much and stay safe.